At what point in life do you grow out of climbing on rocks and stuff? Your mind never gets old. It's just your body that falls to bits. cracking little spot this. If you're watching Gaz, thanks for the tip mate. A few videos back I promised to do a camp in my lightest, my most expensive and my cheapest setups. Today I brought with me my lightest camping setup. It's actually changed a little bit as um, I've had a new backpack since then so this weighs less than my um, Osprey Talon 33. So this whole setup excluding water and a few cans of beer that I brought weighs in at seven kilos so uh, that includes battery packs and and one meal as well and a few snacks but lightweight doesn't always mean better so i'll explain a bit more about that when i've got things set up get fed up with me pack falling over so i just shove the hiking poles in then just put these loops over each other it gives me a bit of a backrest, stops it falling over. So home for the night, we're not forecast any rain but I brought a tarp just in case. I'm not going to set it up if I don't need it though so we'll just play it by ear. So I'm not going to go through every single bit of gear today. Um, I'm just going to sort of generalise when it comes to lightweight camping. Uh, tell you about some of the pros and cons that, that I've experienced anyway. Take this bivvy setup for example, you can chuck a bivvy just about anywhere. You can get away with a less than perfect location. You could, you could even drop it down on, on those pebbles down there. You'd be perfectly fine. Whereas a tent, you need a much bigger footprint and a flatter spot. I love bivvy camping, but it's not for everybody. And you really need ideal conditions where you just need somewhere to sleep. This is really low profile and you're never going to get blown away by the wind. But for an extra 400 grams or so, you could get something like a Lanshan 2 Pro where you've got acres of space inside if it's raining you can get changed and plenty of room to store your gear and whatnot so sometimes especially when it comes to shelter it is worth carrying that little bit of extra weight as I said I brought a tarp with me but that's an extra 300 grams so for the most part you're better off with a tent unless of course you're a nutter that loves kipping in a bivvy most of the time when it comes to lighter weight gear you sacrifice something else it's usually comfort i find so this sleeping bag for example it's only 400 grams so it is what i'd call ultra lightweight however the zip on it that's it it's about eight inches long so getting in and out of it is really hard work um, whereas a quilt for me is much less restrictive um, and only adds about 
two or three hundred grams to the to the weight of my pack. A lot of the lightweight campers don't even have an air pad, they just use this really thin closed cell foam, something even thinner than that. And I just don't get a comfortable night's sleep if I'm lying on something that thin. Some of the real hardcore ultralighters are even sawing the toothbrushes in half and drilling holes in them to save literally grams. I'm pretty sure I could save a lot more weight by losing a couple of cup sizes up here. There are little changes that you can make to save a bit of weight. Instead of bringing an Nalgene bottle, which is, well, not heavy, but <laughs> it's definitely bulkier than you know, using one of these smart bottles. I know that people don't like you know, using plastic bottles, but you can refill these over and over again. So, you know, for 60p or whatever it is, you've got a reusable bottle that is lighter than this one. I think I've said before, <laughs> this is one of my biggest wastes of money, this. Can't even remember how to get it apart. That's it. I've not brought a windshield with me, so I've got to use the bivvy as a bit of a windbreak. Look at all that heat being wasted. A fan of that design. I much prefer that, that little pop can stove. See that's what happens. Run out of fuel and it hasn't even brought it to a boil yet. It's not far off but it's just pointless unless you've got a really good windshield. It's not as good as my storming Norman cone. This one's loads more efficient, I reckon. Yay! lightweight doesn't have to be expensive this could be made for pennies um, just a recycled pop can with a little bit of gauze inside there whereas this one titanium 30 40 quid something like that yeah <laughs> you choose and both of them are just a simple alcohol burner at the end of the day I'm not normally a beach kind of person it's not very often you get them all to yourself Message in a bottle. Or should I say can? It's a bit lucky, wasn't it? Right, I'm going to jump in here. I'm not putting my rucksack in any sort of bag tonight. Uh, I've got a bin liner to put my boots in though. This is going to come inside with me. The 
see you in the morning. A bit fresh this morning. Massive difference now the tide's come in. Let's get that kettle on go. So not only is it set up lightweight, it's really quick to set up and take it down. I could if I wanted just let the air out of the sleeping pad and then just roll everything up, keep it together and the next night roll it out and bang some air in again. It's really beneficial to have lightweight gear if you're putting a lot of miles in. So if you're doing multi-day trips, something like the coast to coast or the West Highland Way, then the lighter the gear, the less strain it's putting on your body. However, if you're putting a lot of miles in, you need some good sleep to help you recover. So I reckon a tent is far better than a bivvy for that kind of trip. I struggled a little bit last night with a sleeping bag. I didn't like being restricted at all inside it. Uh, this zip just isn't long enough for me. I'd rather carry something a little bit heavier and then you know, be able to open the bag and give myself a little bit of freedom. That's it. What an awesome place to wake up to. I've not made my mind up whether to do the most expensive or the cheapest setup next. That's it for the lightweight setup. If you want to see the hoop bivvy in a little bit more detail, then click this video here. But well, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll leave you with that. <laughs>